Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, we got some not so good news. President Biden has vetoed the bill that would have repealed Saab 121. Saab 121 is the rule which prevents regulated institutions such as banks from holding Bitcoin and crypto. And this was a bullshit rule put together by scumbag regulator Gary Genser. And of course, the Government Accountability Office shot it down, saying this is not in accordance to the law. Congress has to pass the laws here. But Gary Genser and the SEC, under the control of Elizabeth Warren, have been running amok and breaking the law and doing all kinds of shady things. So uh, we saw Democrats join with Republicans. Republicans, both in the House and the Senate, to get this repealed. Uh, it obviously got voted through the House and Senate. And then there was a letter coming out from the White House when it was being voted on in the House saying Biden would veto this. Well, he has followed through on his promise. Now, is this actually Biden? No, this is Elizabeth Warren. I don't think Biden wakes up saying, I don't like Bitcoin and crypto and I want to get rid of this, right? I don't think Biden knows much about this stuff. It is Elizabeth Warren. So she's not giving up. That means we got to keep fighting, folks. We got to keep up the pressure. We got to keep using social media, contacting our representatives, uh, letting them know how we're going to vote and much more. So uh, not great news. However, I want to make sure that you have the balanced outlook on this. This does not affect the bull market, right? We have seen previous bull markets where liquidity comes in and the market runs up to new all-time highs. So Saab 121 was not putting up a roadblock for this bull market. It was more of a nice to have because it would have allowed the banks to come in and be able to buy crypto directly. But we do have the ETFs and that the SEC can't fight back on because they're going to lose in court. So that's why they were forced to approve the Bitcoin spot ETF and now the Ethereum spot ETF and liquidity is coming in globally into this market. So I want to make sure you understand uh, that this is not some major issue where, oh my God, the bull market over. Nothing like that. Um, and here, Mike Belshi, uh, who is the founder and CEO of BitGo, which is one of my sponsors, and BitGo is one of the top crypto custodians out there, he said, for what it's worth, SAB 121 is still a sideshow. The Government Accountability Office already ruled that the SEC can't issue it without congressional approval as per the CRA. The approval was never granted. Saab 121 remains inapplicable as per Congress. So once again, the Government Accountability Office said, hey, this is this is nonsense and it, it won't be able to like go into effect. So it's kind of in limbo right now. So uh, not an issue for this bull market. It's more of the cherry on top of the Sunday where it's you know a nice to have and it's it's it would have helped add more liquidity but overall the bull market's still on and crypto still growing now of course the industry came out and slammed Biden and essentially said look you are going to lose the crypto vote. And uh, here the financial services GOP account tweeted out, it's extremely disappointed that the president vetoed the Saab 121 CRA. This ignores multiple bipartisan votes, which sent the administration a clear message. Its approach to digital asset policy is misguided. Congress will continue to fight for regulatory clarity for digital assets. Patrick McHenry said the president's veto weakens protections for consumers in digital asset markets and upends decades of custody rules. By rejecting the bipartisan consensus of Congress, the administration is doubling down on its failed approach. Senate action on FIT 21 is more urgent than ever. So here's the thing. We we know FIT most likely, you know, as far as probability, it's not going to make it through the Senate this year. I would be very surprised if it did. And even if it gets through the Senate, it, it may take a while uh, before it gets to the president's office. And who knows who's going to be president come November? Will it be Biden? I don't know. Will it be Trump? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But this type of stance is going to hurt Biden for sure with the amount of capital that's being raised by the crypto industry. And uh, many crypto voters are single issue voters and many, many young people uh, hold cryptocurrencies. And I'm not saying that's the number one issue for them, but it is going to be on the ballot for them. And if they know Biden is against crypto in addition to border issues, in addition to economy and inflation, right? It's all just going to snowball for them to say, 
I'm not going to vote for Biden. And I'm not here to pick sides or say who you should vote for. I'm just stating the facts, right? If it was reversed, if it was Trump, I would be saying the same thing. So Biden right now is not doing a good job. So Senator Cynthia Lummis shared a bunch of thoughts. She said, Biden vetoed our bipartisan bill at the 11th hour, hoping you aren't paying attention. Don't let this Friday at five veto go. So they did it at the end of the day to try to hide it under the table, right? Well, and nobody's paying attention. Let's just do it before the weekend. So it'll die down over the weekend. Sneaky stuff. And some people were saying, look, maybe he did it this time too, because we he found out about the, the Trump verdict in the court case and so forth. So, so maybe he sees, oh, Trump is in a weakened position right now because of that. And that in itself is a whole other issue. I'm not going to go into that because this is not a political podcast. Uh, but Cynthia Loma said, pay attention, call out the double talk. She also tweeted out from her other account saying, I will not stand idly by as this admin attempts to skirt the law and I will continue to fight to promote financial innovation and key protections for crypto assets this admin seems hellbent on stifling. Now, even Mike Novogratz, who is a public Democrat, he's he's often you know highlighted that. He said, this is disappointing and maybe predictable, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. The Democrats are trying to defuse Trump being the crypto president, and we're doing a great job, but this doesn't help at all. Whoever is advising Biden needs to have his head examined. Mike, it's not his head examined. It's her head examined. That is Elizabeth Warren. Here, Avital, uh, who is the founder of Electric Capital, this is a crypto fund, he said, Biden just lost the crypto vote. What a stupid, stupid mistake. Now, Brad Garlinghouse had tweeted out earlier today, um, the news coming from yesterday that sources were saying the Biden campaign was ramping up their discussions with the crypto industry because they were in panic mode because Trump, you know, and his stance and the party, the Democrats were supporting crypto now. And he said, if Biden administration is actually serious about a shift and finally waking up to the crypto electorate, the single most important thing they can do is demand a resignation of Gary Genser. Now, he followed up with that tweet saying, well, after only a few hours, this post didn't age well. So he's highlighting the Saab 121 veto, saying to say that this is incredibly disappointing from this White House at an incredibly pivotal time is an understatement. So everybody's like, yeah, this really sucks. Now, once again, doesn't affect the bull market. Bull markets have happened without this banks being able to hold crypto, right? And once again, we got the ETFs. Now, there was a report that came out yesterday saying the U.S. Treasury isn't trying to ban crypto mixers, top official says. Now, the current administration uh, with Janet Yellen and so forth, they have been against crypto and uh, bringing out draconian rules, uh, things that would ban mixers and uh, any type of decentralized exchange or, or DeFi protocol and so forth, right? They're really trying to target that under the marching orders from Elizabeth Warren. Ryan Selkis says, more empty words. Believe nothing from Joe Biden and President Elizabeth Warren's financial regulators until we see forced resignations, major policy reversals, and an end to lawfare. I love what he did there, that President Elizabeth Warren, it's not Joe Biden. And look, as it relates to the situation, it's not Joe Biden. I, I, we haven't heard one word from Joe Biden about crypto. It's all been Elizabeth Warren. She's pulling the strings. Now, Coinbase continues their battle with the SEC, and uh, they put out a statement uh, just yesterday regarding their lawsuit, and you know they've been going back and forth. So Coinbase accuses the SEC of trying to destroy the crypto industry in a final push to get the agency to write rules. Here's the TLDR. Crypto firms are caught in a catch-22, Coinbase said in its 36-page closing brief filed on Friday in the Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Earlier this month, the SEC rebutted Coinbase's call for rulemaking and said the exchange can't force it to write new rules. This is why we need Congress to act, and this is why the FIT21 bill is so important. It takes away a lot of power from the SEC and brings in the CFTC to help bring balance to this situation. Now, guys, quick word from our sponsor, and that is VeChain. VeChain is one of the top layer one enterprise blockchains out there. They're getting massive adoption. Many big brands are using VeChain to build Web3 and decentralized applications. Uh, some of the brands working with them include BMW, Givenchy. Uh, you have Boston Consulting Group, Walmart China, and many others. The VeChain blockchain is highly scalable, energy efficient, 
and many companies are using them for sustainability uh, projects. So I've been a VET token holder for years. I'm very bullish on this project. If you'd like to learn more about VeChain, check out the link in the description or go to vchain.org. Now, guys, despite all the challenges we're seeing with Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and Gary Genser, we're seeing more members of the Senate and Congress are waking up to crypto and supporting it, recognizing this is the future, the next layer on top of the internet. So Ted Cruz is one such uh, senator who is, you know, he's he's been outright supporting Bitcoin. Texas is very big on Bitcoin mining, and they have some very pro-crypto legislation and rules locally, obviously, to the state. He, he tweeted out today, I just bought three Bitcoin miners and started hashing today in Iran, Texas. So I-R-A-A-N. I'm proud to join the ranks of Texas Bitcoin miners. So, I mean, <laughs> look what's going on. It's pretty incredible. So crypto is going to win. Folks, remember, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. We are transitioning from the then they fight you to then you win phase. And despite what Biden and all these people are doing, they will ultimately lose. They are on the wrong side of history. We've seen it throughout the history of civilization. Disruptive technology always wins. The incumbents always cry and fight and kick and scream while they're being dragged into the new technology and how things will be done. So this is a great sign that uh, you know many government officials are waking up and participating in different ways. Um, some not so good news, folks. We got a major hack coming out from Japanese based crypto exchange DMM Bitcoin. They have lost 48 billion yen, which is approximately $305 million following a hack. They lost 4,502.9 Bitcoin. Ooh, that's a tough one. And this is why. Um, I always advocate for self-custody. I personally use a Ledger hardware wallet. Um, I have multiple ones. And uh, if you'd like to get a Ledger hardware wallet and self-custody, link will be in the description. You can uh, sign up. Um, but but this is why I believe in uh, custodying the majority of your funds on a hardware wallet. Don't get me wrong. I do have some funds like on Coinbase and so forth, but it's not my entire holdings. Um, and I do trust Coinbase because they're a public company. Um, they have top of the level of security and they're insured so if anything gets lost they you know they can cover it so um you got to really do your research and like i said self-custody you can buy it on the exchange but don't leave all of it there and back up your private keys and so forth and this is why i think a lot of people too are going to go to etfs because it, it's within the already regulated tier one custody of like BlackRock and all these guys. And just be careful out there, folks. I hope some of you, some of my Japanese listeners, if uh, you had funds on here, I hope you didn't lose any because that would really suck. Now, folks, I want to highlight something. Um, you know, I haven't talked much about the price of Bitcoin and what's been happening because Bitcoin has been battling the DXY and we're still waiting for that key support level where it truly finds its bottom. And then in the micro, of course, we're talking weekly, monthly here, not yearly, um, and then starts bouncing upwards. And I do believe the bounce will take place in June. I believe uh, maybe two weeks into it, we're going to start to see Bitcoin moving upwards. Now, I could be wrong, um, but uh, based on what the data is telling us, uh, you know, we could see it now. One of the key factors I've talked to you guys about over the years is the M2 money supply, global liquidity. The quick and dirty here is that the more liquidity is entered into the markets, the more asset prices will rise. That's why we've often talked about the debasement of currency. They, the more money they print and the more uh, the debasement, the higher the asset prices will go. Just go look back in, in history, right? Um, it's not only for crypto, it's for stocks, it's for real estate and, and other assets. So this is why you see sometimes rich people, uh, they'll go put their money into uh, collectibles, maybe a rare comic book or a card or a painting, right? Aside from the rarity, what is happening is that they, they know that, hey, I, I'm going to hold this for 10, 15, 20 years, and I'm going to protect my wealth by putting it in a store of value that's going to grow because of inflation, because the governments keep printing. It's part of the fiat debt system. And not a lot of people understand this. They think, oh, let me put my money under the mattress or in the bank account. No, you have to buy assets. Don't get me wrong. You need your rainy day fund, your emergency fund, but you have to put it into assets to outpace inflation. And what we're seeing, folks, and multiple analysts are reporting on this, the M2 money supply is starting to move north again. 
is starting to increase. And this comes by quantitative easing or reverse repo, or however they inject the money, whether it's at the backroom deal or they, you know, you, you know, they're raising the debt ceiling and so forth, because you have to pay for all these things. Um, it's growing and not only in the United States, but globally. So here, Caleb Frenzen, who I've had on the podcast said M2 money supply growth is accelerating. He showed the chart here, and this is actually from the Fed's website. Um, so here in the United States, but globally, it's on the way up too. So here, Matthew Hyland uh, is also highlighting that the uh, M2 money supply is on its way up again. And here's a great example. The, the news came out yesterday. Japan spent a record $62 billion to prop up yen in the past month. <laughs> See what's happening here, folks. Um, there was actually news. I think it was, was it from China? Um, and, and that news kind of went under the radar. They were going to inject billions as well to prop up their stock market, which has actually been performing really well. So they're injecting money. It, you know, the average Joe and Jane don't know what's happening here. They don't they don't know how to interpret this. They hear, oh, they're propping up the, the yen or they're doing this. But what they don't understand is that by injecting more liquidity, they have to print more money, and that's actually diluting your purchasing power, right? Unless you are putting it into assets, whether you're putting it into real estate, stocks, collectibles, uh, cryptocurrencies. Now, you may say, well, why do we need to invest in crypto then? Well, it's as Paul Tudor Jones said, Bitcoin and crypto is the fastest horse in the race. Nothing moves like crypto. So that's why we are here because we could invest in real estate. We could invest in stocks. And look, I'm in, I'm diversified. I am in stocks. I'm also in collectibles. I've actually tweeted about it uh, recently. I've been taking some crypto profits and putting it into highly graded comic books, um, like number one issues, rare ones, right? So I'm not buying like, okay, I'm going to go to the comic book shop and buy one for a dollar. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about comic books that are graded, um, have a rarity to them, and of course, have some popularity to them, you know, around characters and so forth. Now, you don't have to follow me and do that. I'm just letting you, being transparent with you guys, that's one aspect of my portfolio. I have stocks, I have an investment property, and I have a, a normal retirement account that's diversified into different things, bonds, uh, stock market, and so forth. So uh, I'm diversified, guys. I'm, I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket, but uh, I am heavily allocated to crypto, as you can imagine. <laughs> Majority of my portfolio, more than 50% is in, I would say more than 65% is in crypto. So uh, that's just me, you know, not financial advice, do your own research, of course. So guys, um, Things are going to start moving in June, I believe. Here, analyst Crypto Wizard uh, showed a chart saying, weak hands were calling for a bull run top this month. As predicted, Bitcoin is about to close the month bullish with a SR flip. I expect next month to break out to new all-time highs. And I agree with him, not because I'm just listening to him, but I've seen it on the charts. I'm also doing my own charting. I'm not the best at it, but I listen to a lot of different analysts. I also do my own research. Uh, I, I practice what I preach, folks. So do your own research, re learn how to read the charts as well, folks. So you can validate what people are saying to you, right? You don't have to know everything, but if you at least know enough to be dangerous, you can say, mm, uh, no, that doesn't seem right, right? Based on the principles or uh, market cycles and so forth. So something to keep in mind. Folks, don't forget to grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto and Amazon. It's in paperback as well as digital. Grab a copy to support the podcast. If you bought a copy already, please leave a review on Amazon trying to get my rankings up. And also grab a couple copies for your friends and family who want to learn about crypto. It covers crypto's past, present, and future, explains the ETFs, tokenization, what's going on with the SEC, what happened with FTX, and much more. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you all later.